Hi guys, and welcome to a new Fume Effects video. I want to give you an overview of a different side of Fume Effects workflow. This is going to be interesting because rather than focusing on the step-by-step -step approach to how to get fire, smoke, explosions, or other effects, we're going to talk more about the things that you really need to know to be effective inside of Fume. The little gotchas and other interesting things. This will be a three-part series, but first of all, let's talk about setup. As an effects TD, you have a pretty demanding task and even more demanding hardware requirements. If you're going to be successful creating explosions, buildings collapsing, magic effects, volcanoes, vampires, you're going to need the right hardware and setup to do it. Here's the thing, sometimes you're going to be faced with dealing with producers, IT or studios in general, and sometimes they're going to skimp out on buying you the right hardware. Because it's going to be cheaper to buy a slightly less bulky system for you to work on, I've worked as a producer and as a supervisor on plenty of shows. I've done both budgeting as well as doing payroll, and I'm well aware of the next thing. When it comes to cost, the slower your machine, the slower you are going to be. The quality of your work is going to suffer, the simulation times are going to take much longer, also you risk running out of RAM. There are literally dozens of reasons why having a slower machine is going to affect your work. And in return, cost the studio much, much more money. If your machine costs an extra $800 or $1,000 to really beef up, whereas instead you end up with a 12 gigabyte dual processor machine, which isn't that bad, how many hours, days, weeks are you gonna waste waiting for results? Whereas the faster you can work, the faster you can produce. Therefore, you're gonna clock up less man hours. My point is the importance of having fast hardware. Secondly, as with any simulations, whether it's hair, cloth, fur, fire, water, dynamics, the machine is doing most of the thinking. So it's actually ideal to have two machines rather than one. This isn't always the case. Starting at a new studio on a new project and asking for two machines, sometimes you can come off sounding a bit ridiculous. So having access to a render farm is at least the bare minimum necessity. But if you're going to work on one machine and have another one to remote log into via remote desktop or VNC, this will definitely help boost your productivity. You can fire up a sim on that machine and then continue to work on other elements or other shots. Or better yet, while you're in the problem solving stages, fire off variations on other machines so you can try out different things. I tend to work well this way having two machines to multitask around on. But I'm still faced with some places where they're all Maya or they're all Houdini and coming as a max artist and having to juggle this can be pretty crushing at times. Another situation is common, and I do get an extra machine, but then IT comes asking if I want to have more RAM. Nine times out of 10, I'll actually ask for the RAM to be put in my system machine, the one I log into. Why? Because it's more likely I will hit a memory cap on that machine rather than the one I'm working on myself. I'm working hands on on my own workstation, so usually the more detailed sims are going to be the ones happening on my dedicated box. This means that the machine will most likely have more use for that RAM than my own machine. So keep that in mind. If you have a choice to spec up the box that you're currently working on, uh, it's better to spec up the one that you know is separate from you because you can do more detailed sims without worrying about it needing to be interrupted. Then you can continue to move forward and do your work. And that's the most crucial thing. Otherwise, uh, your productivity is really, you're at like 10, 20%. So I think that it's understandable for everyone. You pay a little bit more upfront and you get two or three times the amount of productivity. You're really crippling your artist by having slow hardware. And if you are using that one machine with all that extra RAM, then you're never really gonna use it to the fullest extent. Now, on the hardware. The subject of ideal hardware is always going to be, I want the fastest machine possible. However, I will say this, if you want to have at least 12 threads and 16 gig of RAM as a minimum baseline to work from. So rather than saying that I have or I recommend this exact spec machine from Box or Dell or whoever, I'm just going to outline what I have and what I personally use. So, uh, 12 core, 24 thread box, uh, they're Intel 2.5 gigahertz CPUs, uh, which for me seems ideal. The AMD Intel War is pretty much the same at this point, but Intel seems to be the better ideal one for fume effects. 64 gigabytes of RAM, DDR3 RAM. I have a GeForce GTX 680 with four gigs of RAM, which does the job. I haven't really ever shelled out a lot of money for a uh, video card until now, just because for me, most of the work that I'm doing, I'm uh, referencing in files from other scenes. I'm doing simulation and particle work, which is all CPU based or RAM based. So there isn't really that much necessity to worry about GPU. However, that being said, it is definitely kind of getting to the point now where GPU is a better approach to working with this stuff. 
So having a good card is definitely ideal and navigation in general is gonna be great but at the same time it's not gonna cripple you so if you're worried about budget and you're looking for something to squash and not spend as much money on, video cards is definitely that thing if you're strictly doing just simulation work. If you're doing other things like animation or even uh, deformations and doing heavy duty detailed models then you want a faster card no matter what. So my specs aren't really that heavy and I can spend maybe $2,000 or $2,500 on a box and that will be my workstation. However I do have similarly specced machines on the farm so I don't have a massive render farm but 99% of the time it's 100% being used by me. So that's seven nodes. Ideally I'd love to have a viable solution for cloud-based simulation and rendering uh, and you know, ultimately if I can sit on a beach with a laptop and work through like Orbex over the Amazon's uh, EC2 tech uh, and run Max inside of a browser, fire off all my sims and everything remotely, then that's going to be great. But it is definitely getting to that point. I've worked at plenty of studios using Zinc and other renderers and the need for doing massive amounts of localized rendering has become a less of a requirement. So firing everything out over the, the web is definitely an ideal approach just because you know you don't need to rent hardware a larger studio space worry about having to upgrade your electricity uh, just so that way you can handle the amount of watts you need uh, or having more amps so um, the cost of machines and everything else can get very expensive and that's kind of usually the thing that cripples studios is they take on additional shots and they don't really think about how much that's going to really cripple them. It's not a matter of just getting more artists and more Maya licenses or whatever. It's actually going to be about, okay, well now we need to move into a new office and get uh, more electricity. We need to um, buy more computers and you know all these other things that they don't really think about. And it ends up being um, you know 150% of what the budget would have been. So it ends up coming in as a loss and more stress and more downtime and not really worth it in the end. Huge gamble. Whereas the studios that I see rendering in the cloud now, um, that changes everything. It's a huge game changer. Also, I've actually been getting Blur to work with me on specking out these machines and they're the ones pushing through the purchase orders. So obviously they do a lot of fume effects work over there. So um, they're the guys doing the purchase orders for all the artists. So they know exactly the kind of hardware that they're needing to get the most out of the work that they're doing. So that became a really good idea for me just to kind of work with them to make sure that everything that I'm doing is exactly the hardware requirements that we need to do ideal simulations and everything else. Um, they built a new egg shopping list for me so that worked out really well. Another thing is SSD or solid state drives. Uh, these tend to be more expensive, there's no moving parts in them, uh, which is great if you drop your computer or something, you're not going to lose all your, your work. So firing off uh, local simulations is criminally faster. Uh, however, this will not affect your simulation speeds over the network as much. So make sure that you're on the fastest network possible. Fume effects can soak up a lot of disk space very quickly and having a gigabyte connection is, is really going to change things if you don't have a gigabit connection for your network, then you're gonna notice the speeds drop down considerably. So that's another thing is to make sure that you upgrade your hardware. Most people rely on the onboard network cards and or onboard network, and that usually can be like 100 megabit a second. It's better to spend 20, 30 dollars and get a gigabit card, and that way you're gonna get much faster speeds. And so, like I said, FumeFX soaks up a lot of disk space very quickly and the files get really large. So moving large simulations that are 100 gigabytes, 300 gigabytes per shot around the network isn't unheard of. And if your network isn't as fast as possible, you're going to run into issues which in return will slow down your simulations and therefore take up a lot more time to actually complete. But slowing down your entire network while you're at it. So. This brings me to something that I experienced very heavily on Metallica. While on this movie, I was pushing around 30 gigabytes around the network at any given second, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, hundreds of frames, multiple simulation data bottlenecking everywhere. I had to take my entire network down to reconfigure it just to localize the traffic to the render nodes to deal with. So there was less need for the rest of the network to slow down just because of the large amount of information being transferred. 
So in the 90s, it was a pretty similar situation where you would have 10 megabit cards on all the network boxes. So that would be pretty much the standard speed that people would be dealing with. And at the same time, while while 2D or comp would be pushing around a lot of uh, HD frames or 2K frames, uh, so the plates, all the render elements, all the additional things that they're doing, uh, roto, so suddenly there's a lot of traffic going back and forth. So 2D would actually be bottlenecking the entire network to the point where 3D people couldn't like open their, their files or navigate the folders, the network, anything. So that became a pretty big bottleneck uh, during production at a lot of studios and it became pretty standard that 2D would then move onto their own network. So similar approach is with uh, Fume in general. What's currently happening with, the, like with most current setups is that you have like your PC, which would feed into a hub with other PCs. Okay, not my greatest work here, but then they would feed into a network and especially on a smaller setup, what's actually gonna happen instead of that was actually gonna happen on a so here's what happens in a smaller network, or at least in my situation, what I currently had was at home, I had my PC uh, plugging into a server, which also plugged into all of my render nodes. Okay. And then I had like uh, everything else, you know, media stations like PS3 or whatever, a few of those, uh, everything else all plugging into one area. So you had this one focal point. Problem with that is that when these machines are doing like heavy duty um, simulations, like I'm not kidding, 30 gigabytes, any given moment, that's what's being pushed through the, the farm. And so naturally there's like a huge bottleneck here where nothing is actually able to get through because of that situation. So what I ended up doing, uh, just so that way I could access my server and I could access everything else and continue to work as I needed, localized without the farm chewing up um, all this bandwidth and stopping everything else, was instead uh, I would actually get all the render farm, which I'll put here. So all of these would be connected through one server of its own, like one drive. So it could even have like a NAS, like NAS drive. And they would be connected on their own hub, okay? So that'd be the hub there that would connect to it. So it just meant that all of that was actually localized to one thing and then from there they would feed into the main network. So all the FXD data would be located here. Whereas like max files, uh, renders, all that stuff, everything would be on this drive, like this network, okay? And that network would then feed out to uh, all the PCs working. So what ends up happening, at least to kind of streamline it a little bit, uh, all the standard traffic for, for Max is being done here. Whereas uh, rendering, um, on, like all the rendering and simulations, all that stuff is being done on this network here. And it just means that they're grabbing the FXD files from this location and feeding it back to each machine as they call it. Okay, but they were also grabbing like images and max files, stuff like that from this network, but none of the FXD files are actually going through here. So it just means that everything actually works like very light. There's, you know, my folders, directories, everything were literally like a couple of gig at most, whereas like terabytes of stuff would be being pushed through here at any given time. So this would be completely just, uh, congested, but it wouldn't actually affect how I would work at all. And it sounds pretty simple, I get duh, it's what you do, but 
Initially, when people just plug together in the networks, it's all about getting it all online and all working. And you start to add extra nodes and you figure out, okay, well, there's too many amps being used up here, so we'll put these in another room over here. So you end up getting a very messy network like this one here, where everything is just kind of congested into one. But by efficiently detaching everything that's going to be using fume data onto one hub for itself, and I've worked with a lot of studios and helping build their pipelines, doing consultation on that. And that's kind of like one thing, it's just become like a standard thing. But um, that's always seems to be what works best, is that everyone has their network and does their thing, but they are completely off from the render farm. And the render farm is able to bounce around these files and it, it gets the call for the general information, like images and max files, stuff like that, from the main network but it doesn't have to go very far to get all the fume data or other larger files. And it also means that when you're archiving, uh, as I mentioned before, archiving or doing any of that kind of stuff, uh, it's all um, easy to archive it all here uh, out without having to worry about, okay, well, let's archive it, but let's filter out all the fume data or anything big because that kind of stuff going online over to a media or um, a storage facility elsewhere it gets very big very quickly and it's just a waste of space and bandwidth. So having it all here just means that they don't have to worry about the congestion. It affects this, it doesn't affect that at all. And that's what I did on Metallica. It actually got to a point where I had to unplug my network just so I could get my machine to actually function because the network just pretty much was non-existent. Everything was timing out, trying to get through. Even internet, all that stuff was just couldn't function because it couldn't get uh, you know, through slightly through this heavy amount of like beating that was happening on the network itself. So being pretty uh, careful with how you store your stuff, like putting it on like all your FXD stuff on a really fast solid state drive on a gigabit connection network, um, all this stuff, it, it all adds up and it's very crucial to that workflow.